Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9, we look at who this grace and mercy is for. So it says, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, which is the laws of the Most High. And such as be faithful in love, you believe in the Most High, to keep his commandments and do his commandments, shall abide in with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. So the saints are the finest of children of Israel. So these mercies that we read about, that the Most High is so merciful to, these people are the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, his, for his grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. Who's his elect? Isaiah 45 and 4. Certain things I want you to just remember, because it's very important when it comes to you having to edify anyone in the way they think. The Bible has to see itself for itself. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. Now, another one. Wisdom of Solomon, turn over the next page, 4 and 15. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints. We just define the saints as the children of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. And that he have respect unto his chosen. So he have respect unto his chosen. Who's the chosen? Children of Israel. Who have respect for? Exodus 2.25. Exodus the second chapter, the 25th verse. Exodus 2 and 25. Exodus 2.25, and the most I looked upon the children of Israel, and the most I had respect unto them. So when you go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1, Deuteronomy 1 and 1, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness, right? So the book of Deuteronomy is talking to the children of Israel. What does he say in Deuteronomy 7 and 6? Who is his chosen? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. But thou art an holy people unto the most high thy power. The most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we are the chosen people, the 12 tribes of Israel. Going back to Lamentations, the third chapter. Lamentation 3 and 22 and 23 again. Verse 22. It is of the most highest mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Hear that? His compassions are new every morning. Great is thy faith. And what he believed in. In Malachi 3 and 6. You can't go here now. Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the most high. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, ye twelve tribes of Israel, are not consumed. Because we're in the volume of the book also. And even in the last chapters, like in Revelation, the seventh chapter, the fourth verse down, he talks about the 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel that's going to rule with the Mashiach Yahushua, the 144,000. 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel. 12 times 12 is 144. You put the two zeros out there, you got 144,000. 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel. 12,000 times 12. Every day is 144,000 that's going to rule with the Mashiach Yahusha. Lamentations 3 and 32. But though he caused grief, when you be dipped in a fiery furnace of fix to prove yourself, to prove ourselves, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. That's why he never gives us more than we can bear. And there's always an hour, just you've got to have faith. 
got to believe in him. You can't ever stop believing. Else he's going to stop believing in you. Psalms 18. Psalms 18, chapter. In the 25th verse. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. See? With the merciful, those that can give others mercy, thou wilt show thyself merciful. If with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. So where are you going to be? You look at it like this. With the unmerciful, thou wilt show thyself unmerciful. With the unrighteous man, thou wilt show thyself not right in blessing him or showing him mercy. Straight up. That's why we got to be right. Got to be up with the most high to see this. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, though with such a nasty, funky attitude, thou wilt show thyself forward. I mean, you're going gonna to see that, you're going to deal with you the same way. For thou wilt save the afflicted people. But will bring down high looks the pride. He's gonna bring them down, but he's gonna save the afflicted people. Who more afflicted than Israel? Nobody. Because nobody, no matter how you look at it today, has went through what we went through and gone through. All over the world. All over the world. It's not just here in the Americas, all over the world. A lot of Israelites are suffering a lot worse than we here in America. Better believe that. Brothers and sisters trying to get you to leave America. For what? You, you don't, you, they don't have no jobs for you when you go there. They don't have no businesses. They don't have nothing but barely making it themselves. Oh yeah, the big, the big salvation move is going to be right here. We'll be right here. First Chronicles 16. First Chronicles 16. Let's look at uh, verse 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Most High, for he is good. For his mercy endure forever. Let's give thanks to the Most High, for well, He is good. But you know, everybody says, "Oh, how you doing? I'm good." You know what I'm But even the Master Eckhart Shai said, "Why you call me good? There's only one good. That's the Most High. <laughs> He's the only one that's good. That's why we got to give thanks to the Most High, for well, He is good." For his mercy endured forever. And we see that his mercy is to the children of Israel. Jonah, fourth chapter. You know, Jonah was thrown into the well. He didn't want to listen. Jonah was thrown in the well's mouth. Not listen to the most side, but it was a sign because Mosh, the same sign that he went through is the same thing that the Mashiach Yahushua said. He said, hey, you're going to be, he said, he said he's going to be in the earth three days. Three days. Look at Jonah, the fourth chapter. And it's a prayer. We're going to look at the fourth chapter, start at verse one. But it displeased 
Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Most High and said, this is very key, I pray thee, O Most High, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious power, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repented thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Most High, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Just said the Messiah, do it thou well to be angry. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat under him in the shadow, till he might see what would become of the city. See, but what I want you to see is how, verse 2, he said, and he prayed unto the Most High and said, I pray thee, O Most High, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before to Tarshish. For I knew that thou art a gracious power. This our power, be very gracious and merciful. is very gracious unto Israel. We just got to appreciate it. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah the 31st chapter. Jeremiah 31, start at verse 1. It said, At the same time, said the Most High, will I be the power of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus said the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel. When I went to cause him to rest, the most I have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Loving kindness have he drawn us to himself. Think about it. He appeared unto them in those times as he's appearing unto us in his own way in our time. Those that have ears to hear and 
eyes to see, to understand the spirit and understand how he operated through us today. Look at uh, Baruch, the second chapter. We'll start at the 19th verse. Therefore, we do make our humble supplication before thee, O Most High, our power, for the righteousness of our fathers and of our kings. But thou hast sent out thy wrath and indignation upon us, as thou hast spoken by thy servants, the prophets, saying, This wrath and indignation came upon the children of Israel, as the Most High spake by his servants and prophets, saying, Thus said the Most High, Bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon, for shall he remain, he remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers? But if he will not hear the voice of the Most High to serve the king of Babylon, I will cause the seats out of the cities of Judah, and from without Jerusalem, the voice of mirth, and the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom, women being able to get married, men being able to get married, and the voice of the bride, and the whole land shall be desolate of inhabitants, because we ain't follow his law sets commandments. And he, took, he put us in captivity under Babylonians, the Ethiopians, for 70 years. But he would not hearken unto, excuse me, but we would not hearken unto thy voice to serve the king of Babylon. Therefore hast thou made good the words that thou spakest by thy servants the prophets. Namely, that the bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers should be taken out of their places. And lo, they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night. And they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. In a house which is called by thy name has thou laid waste, as it is to be seen this day, for the wickedness of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, covering all twelve tribes of Israel. O most high our power, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness, and according to all that great mercy of thine, you hear that? Almost like our power. Once, once he started killing us and dealing with us and, and put us in captivity and, and, and doing a job on us, then we won't cry to him. Almost high. Verse 20 says, Almost high our power. Thou hast dealt with us after thy all thy goodness. And according to all that great mercy of thine, as thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write thy law before the children of Israel, saying, If ye will not hear my words, hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me. Hear that? He said he knew that we wouldn't hear him because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And that's what we are now. We're in the land of our captivities. 
remembering ourselves as being the true and ethnic biblical Jews, the true and ethnic biblical 12 tribes of Israel, and shall know that I am the most high their power, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. He's going to give us a mind and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. And think upon my name. This is what we're doing now, brothers and sisters. We're praising the Most High in the land of our captivities. And think upon the name of the Most High, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's his name forever and ever and ever. Don't let nobody tell you what he did. He said, that's my name forever and ever. In Exodus 3, 15 and 16, Matthew 22 and 32, Mashiach Yahushai called him out as such. The power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. Acts 3.13, all day, all night, 24-7. So that's my name forever, the world to all generations, and we're in a generation now. He said, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck, and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before them. That's why we got to come back to his laws. That's why we can have this un, I mean, relentless mercy to us, the children of Israel. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Most High. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That kills it right there. I mean, that kills anybody that's trying to come in that's not of Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob, who became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords, they shall be powers of it. We're going to be powers over the land. And I will increase them. They shall not be diminished. 